to start off, if I may, with you, Lorenzo, what is the macroeconomic context from your perspective in which this whole potential uh, process towards market opening and investment opening is going to take place? So, Lorenzo, please set the uh, tone and example for us as our first panelist. Yeah, I suppose in terms of timing, though. Exactly. Uh, yeah, um, so I'll try to, to be brief. And uh, thank you for, for inviting me. Um, I will focus on the macro issues. I think the, the key question uh, that um, Fabrizio Saccomani also raised, which is linked to the reasons why we are in this crisis in Europe, is that also Europe started with free trade and ended up in a, in a financial crisis uh, uh, 50 years later. Because it's very difficult to conceive uh, to have only trade as being integrated without then services, within the, then capital movements, uh, without uh, also linking monetary policies, and then uh, maybe you have uh, to realize that other things have to be linked, including fiscal policies. So, uh, looking in that perspective, uh, are we starting with the right foot? And um, if, if we think about the crisis we are in, uh, on both sides of the Atlantic, we cannot uh, omit from uh, seeing that the solutions to the crisis are quite different uh, and may have an impact on, uh, on, on, on each other. Uh, there are basically three ways to address uh, a debt overhang. One is to have uh, restrictive fiscal policies for several years. The second one is to have inflation or to have the public sector or the central bank absorb the risks that have been uh, taken by the private sector. And the third is uh, debt restructuring. Now, if you think about Europe and the US, uh, you can see that the approach is quite, is quite different. Uh, Europe clearly has opted for the first solution as the first best and the third solution uh, uh, if you can't make it. Uh, and there is really no room, uh, even in the treaty, for the second solution, which is, which is inflation. And if you look at the strategy, actually, it has been quite successful for some countries. If you think about Germany, uh, uh, it has been able, uh, Germany has been able to, to adjust its budget quite successfully. Uh, but other countries have uh, many more problems, as we know, to the point of the extreme of Greece, which has been uh, uh, forced to, to restructure its debt. Um, and we know the consequences of, of this strategy, which has been uh, deliberately chosen by, by Europeans. On the other side, you have the US, which has uh, so far maybe, mainly uh, adjusted through uh, monetary policy and the Fed absorbing the risks. And there is no real uh, medium-term uh, uh, fiscal adjustment. Now, these two uh, different strategies have, have an impact not only on their own on the respective economy, but on, on the global economy, on the financial markets, and on each other, both in the short term and, and in the long run. And this is the, the fundamental question. Are these strategies compatible? Are they not going to lead to tensions uh, in the financial markets and in, in trade relations? So that's a key uh, issue you want to address if you think about liberalizing uh, trade. Now. Uh, is it possible that uh, these two major areas uh, implement different strategies without uh, uh, impacting each other? Now, um, before coming to, to the issue of the impact on financial markets, it's clear that uh, there are risks. Uh, and, and there are risks if these two strategies don't work out. So it is in the interest of the US that the European strategy uh, works. And it is in the interest of the euro, euro area that the U.S. strategy works. And we have seen this uh, during Obama one in particular, uh, with the U.S. administration being very concerned about Europe being able to progress and to make the adjustment in time because the impact on the uh, U.S. economy would have been devastating and on financial markets uh, as well. Uh, it is also in the euro area interest that the U.S. are successful and that growth picks up uh, so that... Uh, uh, this need for very accommodative policies uh, is corrected. And as long as these uh, uh, policies are not successful, so in the short to medium term, the risks are that the impact of the policies on each other are, are rather negative than positive. And if you think about, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't think that uh, Fabrizio uh, uh, mentioned the word currency wars, but but there is a risk that all the adjustment is on the financial markets and on the exchange rate. And, um, 
and this risk is a, is, is a real one in the sense that the exchange rate between the euro and the dollar is the only relative price which is left to adjust. And the reason is that other relative prices are not adjusting, in particular uh, those of uh, some emerging markets, in particular in Asia. So we are uh, uh, in the face of uh, starting some important discussion in the trade area with some risks in the financial sector and affecting a relative price which is very important for trade relations. And uh, incidentally, this was one of the reasons why Europe moved to the monetary union in order to reduce exchange rate volatility. So uh, can we move to further integration in the trade area without having some kind of agreement on ways to avoid excessive fluctuation of exchange rates between the dollar and, and the euro? And the key, in my view, is, is in the end the relationship with Asia and with China. Uh, if uh, the US and if Europe think that they can address the uh, issue of the exchange rate uh, of the Chinese uh, currency and all the <coughs> agents uh, by themselves without a common agreement, then I think it is a lost cause. So the issue of uh, trade integration requires also some broader agreement on how to manage financial and exchange rate relations with emerging markets, in particular China. And this is, is, a, is an issue we have been discussed, uh, discussing for a long time, but have not been really successful. I mean, uh, the various uh, US administrations uh, have uh, taken different views. Europe maybe has not had a sufficiently strong institutional framework for having the dis these issues discussed in a strong way. And uh, so let me maybe close on, 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 on this. I think, um, uh, it's, it's probably uh, right, it's not necessarily easier, but it's probably right to start from trade, but one has to be uh, very careful not to uh, go in a direction uh, based on European experience also, where you realize that uh, uh, other things need to be integrated and the political cost is so high that you may risk uh, moving backwards. So. Um, Trade integration is, is, is very positive if you don't move backwards. And in order not to move backwards, you, know, you need to move forward in other fields, in particular in the financial and monetary uh, sphere. Thank you.